So let's recap. Floraverse is an open source webcomic. Floraverse has three key players in its creation. Glitched Puppet, better known as Glib, Marl, their ex-husband, and Evie, their current wife. The three of these were in a polyamorous relationship before the conception of Floraverse and its adult companion comic Forbidden Flora there was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers, typically shortened to PMDE, which was a community on DeviantArt. Their community focused on role-playing as multiple Pokemon within the Pokemon universe and thus featured primarily young people. Despite this, Glib would allegedly multiple times depict these Pokemon in sexual situations, oftentimes against their will and with an age difference between the two parties. Glib would link to these stories without giving warnings about their adult nature, as well as purposely cutting their stories short and encouraging people to read the rest on their Tumblr. Glib would also admit to finding the concept of an adult teaching the young about sex to be interesting. They would also feature their alleged self-insert character PK, presumably named after their former nickname, Purple Kecleon, raping a young character. Glib would also create a Tumblr blog in which they'd take on a sexual mentor role where they'd try and teach children about sex, proving they were very well aware of their young audience. Eventually, they would shut down Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers and encourage people to instead go follow Floorverse, hinting at the fact that the characters people knew and loved may show up in that comic. At the same time, they get into various online spats with people such as the voice actor Sean Chiplock, the YouTuber Jay Wits, and Steven Universe writer Matt Burnett. They would also get called out by their former partner, Penko Solvent, who would claim that Glib had been a poor partner while dating, and allegedly hadn't respected Penko Solvent's feelings and forced them to work under strenuous work conditions. Penko Solvent would allege that Glib's at the time husband, Mal, was trying to get people to have sex with his dog, and multiple people would both come out and say Mal had approached them about the same suggestion, as well as stating their own poor experiences with Glib. Eventually, Mal himself would come out and admit to liking people having sex with animals, but he did not appreciate this being public knowledge. After Pango Solvent published this private message, Glib and Marl would threaten Pango Solvent with a lawsuit unless they took the post down. Not wanting to get sued, Pango Solvent would do as told, but things were only getting started. In 2014, around the same time as the initial allegations by Penko Solvent came to light, a person by the name of Lane, also known as Spackle, would make a call-out post on Tumblr. They wrote, Allow me to introduce myself. I don't feel safe disclosing my name on here, but you may call me Lum. BK and Mal, please do not say my actual first name because I have developed extreme paranoia about that sort of thing. I am 14 years old as of the 29th of September 2014. I am an autistic trans person with paranoia problems, a severe anxiety and depression disorder, and some other mental illnesses I don't really want to talk about here. I have a history of abuse, and I've been hospitalized in the past because of abuse. I have some things to say about PK's husband. I didn't bring this up earlier because I was in a very delicate state of mind, just recently have been in the hospital and been through some shit with a sexual predator. I'd like to start with a summary of what happened around March of this year. I said something inappropriate to another person in the Floraverse IRC chat that I cannot recall. If you can happen to remember, please let me know and I'll apologize. I'm sorry that I said those things. Anyway, I had been frequenting the Floraverse NSFW IRC, which I know now was wrong. I'm really sorry about that, I now know that it was very inappropriate for me to be there, but I don't think it's my fault for some of the things that Mal had said to me. I don't have any screenshots because this was a private IRC convo, but if Evie can somehow bring up the lock between me, Spackle Dagger, and Mal, I'd be very grateful. I first started talking to Mal after he PM'd me one day, after I mentioned that I happened to have a sexual thing I was embarrassed about in the chat. Again, I know it was inappropriate for me to be in that channel, but I wasn't exactly inviting anyone to come and chat to me asking what this sexual thing was when I mentioned the said thing. 
So we chatted a bit and age came into the chat. I revealed my age of 13 and he was surprised but kept initiating sexual talk after that. Yes, you read that correctly. Being autistic, I have no fucking idea what the huge glaring in your face red flags are until weeks, even months after abusive things happen. Mal told me about how he likes bestiality and told me about how he once watched a woman fuck a dog and sent me a picture of dog balls. They have a dog at home, so what do you think they do to that poor thing? Animal abuse for Christ's sakes. And I was just like, uh huh, okay being really skeeved out but kind of locked up and I think I was disassociating and not knowing what to do so I was just autopilot there for a while. Anyway after that he would still talk to me about weird sexual things until one day he started to bring me into his weird ass fantasies. He told me how in a perfect world he would meet me at a con and I remember this part very vividly. He said he'd pack up his lunch and follow me up into a hotel room quietly, nothing else needed to be said and then he proceeded to explain how he had fucked me in vivid detail. My challenge to you, Mal, is to own up to this shit. I know you won't. Find these logs and publish them all. Admit what you have done. I'm starting to lose my cool timing this, so I'm going to go take a nap. That's all. Bye. They would then, a year later, write a post on Kiwi Farms saying, Hi, I basically just came here to give my word and get the fuck out. I don't have many receipts, explained later, but I feel safe leaving this piece of juicy PKT bone steak for you all. I'm not even planning on returning to this forum, some power leveling might be necessary to tell my story. In this thread, one of you implied that Mal, PK's husband, might be a sociopath. This got the hamster wheels turning and a lot of things started to make sense. I am a Spurg Lord, literally. Malaprops makes me want to fucking scream, but literally. Early on, send avoidant personality disorder, minor, not old enough to drive, and a girl. Due to AVPD, I will probably not say anything more than this post unless I find more evidence. Mal is 27. Last year, in the April-May area of 2014, I joined the Floraverse IRC. I remember being so excited. I was such a fan of PK's work ever since I was younger. I used to spend hours emulating her work, which gag after taking more than one art class, I resent ever thinking she was a god. The night before Flora Wars came out, I stayed up late to wait for the countdown on the group page. Ew. When the Flora Wars IRC opened, I was hyped. Talking to people was much less of a problem than that it is now, mind you. I went in there with the handle Speckle Dagger. The people there were amiable and sweet and I remember physically shaking from the excitement of actually talking to normal people and being in the graceful presence of THE Purple Cachlea. Then a few days later, they opened a NSFW Floraverse chat. Okay, I admit, I kinda fucked myself over with going in there. I mean, I am a young and curious pubescent girl, but I'm almost 100% sure I mentioned my real age in the main IRC chat, 13 at the time. I'm not completely certain if anyone in the Forbidden Flora chat saw that or if they chose to overlook it, due to me seemingly having agency and intelligence. I mainly went to that chat because it had very few users and those few users were, you guessed it, the Terror Trio of Mal, PK and Evie. Well one day I decided to private message Mal. Everything was okay at first, he seemed very chill and understanding and interested in me. He asked me about my interests and favorite Pokemon and favorite bands. This was before things got nasty. I now regret linking him in my old Tumblr, but I did. He called me very beautiful, apparently going through my tag pictures of myself. This is when things start to get weird. He asked me things like, why are you so skinny? Hyperthyroidism. How old are you really? I told him. I made him internet pinky promise not to tell anyone my age. Then, well, the infamous dog dick picture. He asked me if I was into bestiality and if I would ever fuck a dog. I was very uncomfortable at this because I thought that bestiality was animal abuse and told him that many times. Mal told me he would change my mind. He told me about how once he watched a girl have sex with a Doberman and was sad he could not find pictures for me. I would like to remind you, I was 13 when this happened. He then sent me a picture of an unsheathed dog dick just so I knew. 
Sometimes I'm scared that this was a picture of his dog's dick. I remember crying at that. He sent me a picture of himself. He had dark short hair and acne scars on his face, but looked normal to me. The tipping point of this for me, and when I made my great escape, was when he started telling me how he had unprotected sex due to his vasectomy and how he wouldn't mind meeting up with me if the world were a fantasy world where it would be legal for an almost 30 year old to have sex with a 13 year old. I remember this part very clearly. He said that we would meet at a con in his hotel room and he would slowly pack up his lunch, nothing needing to be said but what our bodies would express. He said that he wondered how tight I would be and how he always been interested in fucking super skinny young girls so he could see their rib cages. I never spoke to him again, except recently I went into the IRC to try to get him to get Evie to look through the logs to get proof for me as a last ditch effort. I cannot get logs for you all and I regret this. This all happened on midbit on Evie's IRC in a private IRC chat and browser cookies have been cleared since that time last year. Maybe if I call the cops they can find it, not sure if I'm ready for that sort of stress now but I can. They can't threaten me with legal action either because I'm a minor. Oh, I got into a Twitter fight with PK after getting booted off the IRC for making a your mom joke but that's a whole nother story. Thanks! These allegations were scathing and serious, and unfortunately for Marl, there were reasons to believe them, considering how they came out around the same time as Marl was being outed for his interest in having sex with animals. Glip was quick to dismiss Lane, saying that they had logs of Lane saying she sent nudes to someone and then wanted to get them arrested for possession of child porn. They would also post logs of Lane being overtly sexual. But the logs would not contain anything about Lane's age, nor of her allegedly wanting someone arrested for child porn. The only thing about Lane's age was how they claimed to have not known Lane was only 13 until the day she left, which would indicate that they didn't confirm Lane's age before allegedly starting to talk about adult topics with them. If Lane is to be believed, she was also given access to the NSFW IRC without first confirming her age. Although this has then later been brought into question when Glyph himself would state that Lane immediately would announce her age the instant she joined the server. The longer email detailed her seeking out older men so she could try to bait them. She did this in our IRC channel in creepy ways actually. She went to call the FBI on her boyfriend because he had CP and we were horrified. But she meant of herself, what the fuck, no. She immediately showed up in our server being weird and sexual and talking about drinking and fucking her boyfriend and drawing porn long before she said she was 13. She was obviously trying to trick people into thinking she was older. No shit, but it just creeped us out. She then went on to make up stories about things Mal supposedly said to her, about things that I know for a fact he does not remotely care about, because I did at least know that much. If her story didn't gain traction, she'd make up another one and that was just another iteration. Lane's allegations were severe and Glib was fuming over them and would continue to do so for multiple years. In 2014, four years later, Glib would go on a Twitter rant saying, I'm losing my fucking mind that it's so easy for children liars to just kind of pick someone to target. Yes, sometimes children are horrible monsters who know exactly what kind of destruction they are causing. No, this isn't always the case, but sometimes it fucking is. No, I don't like undermining victims, but I don't like people falsely claiming to be a victim either. It's abhorrent, and people who do this contribute to actual victims not being believed. It is so, so supremely shitty to do this. I have every single reason to believe Spaggle slash Lane slash Glib Predator House is lying, because she's left a trail of documented lies and destruction in her wake for at least five fucking years now. If I were not a thousand fucking percent sure of this, I would not be so confident here. I am loath to give another shred of attention to this fucking parasite. Here's warnings about her doing the same tactic she is doing right now from 2015. I had to omit a bunch of fucking stuff because this person is so incredibly scared of her. This string of tweets will serve as a catalyst for something later, so please keep them in the back of your mind for now. It was around this time that Glib changed their online alias from Purple Kecleon to Glitched Puppet. 
However, with the name change didn't come a lot of reform on Glyph's part. They would still continue to make comics about rape, bestiality, and underage characters. In fact, Glyph was now doubling down, wishing for their comics to be something children would stumble over, read, and through that find out what their sexual identities were. My legacy will be 13 year olds secretly reading Forbidden Flora and realizing they're gay and or trans. The whole reason I made the comment about it'll be my legacy was that when I was a teen I was actively seeking out work that called to me. I wished I'd been able to read adult work that wasn't exploitative. None of it covered the real feelings behind gender or sexuality. In 2018, a chat log between Marl and a miner that goes by the name Big Fluff dropped. Apparently, Big Fluff was not the one who dropped the logs and instead, the logs were published by none other than Lane, who Big Fluff had shared the logs with in private. In the logs, Marl was trying to convince the miner to not only participate and sell porn, but a significant portion of the logs were centered around Marl trying to coerce Big Fluff in having sex with a dog. Throughout the conversation, Big Fluff's age is brought up several times, as well as them being a minor and not wishing to get into trouble. The logs would also reveal that Marl had shown the minor a picture of his penis and how Marl was trying to introduce Big Fluff to a prostitute friend of his in case they were interested in a job as an escort. You know, if you ever actually wanted to make and sell porn and sex stuff, I would definitely help. PK and I are thinking of it, as it is a whole lot of money. Hell yes it is, I would like that a lot. I'm still underage and shit, so I wouldn't want to get you in trouble. Age of consent is 16 here. I couldn't distribute anything of you until you hit 18, you know, if you still like dogs and stuff. You could do a thing with two or three of them. I have two friends now, both with trained ones. How do you make so many dog fucker friends? Well, you meet a lot like-minded people once you have a dog and you're into that. But yeah, what do you think? That would be awesome. And I could sell something like that for at least 2000 That's the low end too. That would be awesome. But I don't want to get into legal issues like ever. Oh my god. Aha. <laughs> Alright. Well, you could always help film it. That's mostly how I feel about it. Like, I'd fuck dogs and I'd get vids taken, but I don't want to get in trouble. I completely understand. The other girl I know is gonna be wearing a wig and getting one of those fake tattoos that wash off. Does that work? Absolutely. Mask, wig and hair dye, fake tattoos. No one will ever know it's you. The girl I filmed with the Great Dane did that. I didn't recognize her when I watched the video. Hmm, I'll think about it and I get a cut, right? Dude, do you even have to ask? Marl and Big Fluff would arrange for Big Fluff to meet up in real life, so Big Fluff could help Marl with the Floorwars merch store. While visiting the family in their home in Las Vegas, they allegedly ran into Glib in the nude. Big Fluff would later clarify that when this happened, Glib would put on a shirt but remain pantsless. After the business visit, Mal would allegedly attempt to get Big Fluff to come by again, this time however for sex purposes. Glib would later claim that they never had anyone underage in their house, which contradicts the logs. Post after post from this fucking absolutely insane child claiming something happened that absolutely did not fucking happen. She told one of my good friends that she lived next door to us. I hear this also made it into her stories of abuse too. She lived three states over from us. It's just insane. I cannot describe how fucking insane this has been. It makes me feel literally crazy that there are people who vehemently think some sort of wild child crime happened in our house when we never let anyone underage in our Vegas home ever, period. Ever. Ever. They would then later recount Big Fluff's story about them allegedly meeting Glib in the nude, saying how they remembered the incident. Sorry for writing so much about this, but I've been trying to figure out what the fuck happened with her for months and months now because I don't understand why she's still after me when I didn't do anything to her at all. We barely talk. 
The second person I had reason to believe in was lying because they told a story about me where I remember it and the story they told was just wrong in several ways. Now I can recognize their bad emotions probably colored it, but it made me dismiss everything they said because of it. It was becoming increasingly apparent that Glib was not above lying. These logs were damning and a user dumped them on the Floorwars Discord, which led people wanting answers. As a result, Mal would, through a Discord mod known as Gapop, admit to the validity of the logs. Gapop wrote, Hey, I just talked to Mal. He wanted me to relay this message. I know who that person is. I won't ever give out their identity, no matter what they choose to do. But if they do want to talk about it, for their therapy or for any other reason, I will gladly do so. I never meant to cause any harm, and I never approached conversations with them with any malintent. But intent isn't always important, and it's what actually happens that counts. And I'm sorry for causing them this grief. If they want a direct apology from me, I'll give it. In other words, Mal was confirming the validity of the logs. Gapop would continue the talk with the person who dropped the logs on the Discord, acting as the messenger for Mal. They would ask in Mal's stead what the user wanted, to which the user said they didn't want anything other than to make people aware of what Mal had done and that Glip and Eevee probably knew about it all along. It would seem that the user not wanting anything that could be considered a bribe caused Gapop to backpedal in Mal's stead, saying, Mal would like to know what you want from him then. I don't want anything. I want people to be aware of what he'd done. Not excusable, and chances are Glib and Eevee know as well. Okay, well, this doesn't make very much sense. The dates don't add up, the writing doesn't sound like Mal, and the logs look faked. It looks like it was written in notepad. Despite having conveyed for Mal not 15 minutes earlier that the logs were real. And when people were outraged by this revelation, Gapop would try to downplay the severity and validity of it all by claiming the logs must be fabricated because they came from the online forum Kiwi Farms, a website known for documenting and discussing a myriad of online oddities. For context, all the harassment is coming from a website dedicated to harassing acceptable targets like queer people, women, disabled folks, etc. The logs spread like wildfire and both found their way onto Tumblr and Twitter. This caused another alleged ex-partner of Glip, Jungle Kawa, to tweet out about Mal trying to get her to have sex with his dog. They wrote, P.S. My house is like 600 square feet. It'll literally be impossible for me to house even one extra human being, much less three plus four cats. Much less an ex and another person I wasn't close to who tried to get me to do things with them in secret during cons and dogs on various occasions. Like, come on! I'm definitely deleting all this later though because I don't want to look at it. They would furthermore answer a private message of someone inquiring about all of this. Here, Jungle Kawa would reveal that they had been dating Glib sometime between 2013 and 2014. During this time, Mal had made several advances on them because Glib had allegedly said it was fine, considering it was a polyamorous relationship. However, Jungle Kawa was only in it for Glib and had no interest in Mal, who would allegedly continue to make advances on them, trying to have sexual hookups at cons, of which he had mentioned was a sexual fantasy of his. This correlates with the alleged sexual fantasy that Lane had mentioned earlier. He also talked to them several times about having sex with his dog Apollo and even figured the thought only got more enticing when Jungle Kawa got married. Okay, so I can expand further later if you have questions, but here's what I have for now for my 15 minute break. Glib and I dated back in like 2013-14. I was 22-ish and we didn't date for super long. I was only invested in Glib. I didn't talk to Eevee basically even once in person, despite staying with them a few times, so nothing has to do with them. And to be honest, despite some negativity in the relationship, I don't have any personal issues against Glib. Though my issue with Mal makes me question them. Anyway, so. I remember one day when I went to visit them, Glib was drawing and I was up in the bedroom. Mal came in and like laid down next to me. I don't remember exactly what was said, but he 100% wanted to have sex with me and apparently had asked Glib if it was okay, which apparently it was. But I didn't do it. 
I was a little freaked out because even though it was a poly relationship, I was only in it for a clip and was too worried to bring it up. As time went on, he started texting me to arrange secret meetups during conversations to have sex, reassuring me that he was snipped so nothing bad could come of it. I never did it, but he messaged me with something like this as recently as sometime this year or late 2017. I've stopped going to cons though. He also talked to me many times about fucking his dog when he had him, how he could take Apollo's nut and how he'd like to do things like watch that and or take me from the other end or take turns. He also messaged me a few times telling me it'd be even harder because I'm married now. <laughs> I definitely let these talks happen but I never started them. I never dated him and the only person I had contact with intentionally was Glib. yet for years he pestered me for sex in various ways. Jungle would also follow up the message by saying I supported Glib for years because in person, and I know you all disagree, but they were a really interesting person to be around and I trusted them. However, seeing them 100% deny the dog fucking and stuff, it makes me question their and Miles' relationship and legitimacy of things they said to me too. However, for what it's worth, Miles did say to me once he was disappointed because Glib didn't want to fuck the dog, for what it's worth. Due to the wildfire that were these logs, it also ended up allegedly reaching Floor vs. Business Partners. As a result of this, the comic was allegedly taken off of the Hiveworks website and ESC Toys ended their Floor vs. Toy campaign. Floor vs. Collectible Update Thank you for your order. Due to recent allegations on the creators of Floor vs, we have decided to discontinue this project at this time and offer a refund to those that are requesting it. We are disappointed by such allegations and since this is a complex matter, our investigation into this matter is ongoing. The opinions and behavior of the Flores creators do not express, reflect, nor share those of ESC Toy Limited, which includes its officers and employees. Our goal is and always was to produce favorable and exclusive collectibles as well as entertainment. Since we are now entering the quarterly schedule of which ESC promised to ship the pre-order goods, we want to give you the option to receive or cancel your reserved pre-order. If you prefer to receive the merchandise you pre-ordered, ESC will honor the transaction and we will ship out the merchandise in late May slash early June. As of this stage, ESC will not be engaged to produce any future forwards items once this initial inventory runs out. ESC staff. It was clear that Miles' alleged degeneracy had burned a lot of bridges and it was threatening to also burn down the kingdom itself. Floraverse. As of such, there was only one thing for the trio to do. Run with their tails between their legs.